from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary, all my beautiful bakers out there. Uh, it's time for the podcaster who believes this is, I'll be the first to put me on for this. I believe that it's time Clay made a comeback and I'm not talking about Clay. I mean, I love Clay, like Clay, Clay, Clay from GSW, but, uh, I'm talking about Clay cause there's modeling Clay, then there's Play-Doh and then there's other stuff. And then there's a, like, a, which was a couple of years ago. That was a thing. What was that stuff? Goop you made or like slime. But I think right now, you know, uh, I mean, I wouldn't, in, I don't think, I think it's from the earth. So you don't need to invest in it because it's all around us. I th- or I believe just plain old clay, plain old clay is just fine. You're not plain old clay to me. I'm just plain old silly because you may be asking yourself, what is it? It's time for sleep with me. The podcast that puts you to sleep. All right, everybody, before we uh, get get on here, I just wanted to let you know, uh, you know, Sleep With Me, again, exists uh, from a place of empathy and compassion. It exists to support you in a good night's sleep. And that comes with a little bit of responsibility from me to say, if you're having a tough time right now, there's links to resources in our show notes. Uh, please use those resources. Connect with someone right now if you need it, and they can connect you to, you know, get you pointed in the right direction. And the second thing is, you know, I'm here to support you because you're a member of multiple communities of mine, and I'm happy to support you. And I want to make sure I support the members of my community, and I'm going to do that by voting. So if you're in the U.S., please, please vote. Uh, It does make a big difference, and it's a step you can take to empower yourself, empower your voice. And if you want to go beyond voting and, uh, you know, use your voice to support the black members of our community because black lives matter, or to to look and use your inner voice and say, where am I with all this? Where how can I be a part of progress and positive change? There's going to be links to organizations that can help point you in the right direction in our show notes. So thank you so much for listening. And uh, here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring this show for free twice a week. Voter turnout this year is predicted to come in at around 65%. What is that, like a D plus? Come on, America. I see us pulling down more like a B. B minus. Easy. Get out there cast that ballot. No matter who you are, no matter how you vote, it's not government by 65% of the people after all. It's about all of us weighing in and being heard. Make a plan, bring a friend, and vote. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, boy, do I have some. This is the part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That's how you get get to do this and bring this to you for free. And the listeners that went a step beyond that and amplified their support by tagging uh, the the sponsor on social media, sharing a story about it, or sending them a message. And Brooklyn got some great support. They've been with the show for so long. Amanda Moran. Miranda, Christy, Callie, Grant and Anna all supported Brooklyn and all of them are getting cozy. You got those super plush towels. You got some nice sheets. Uh, I know some, some people have been getting their sleepwear. So thank you so much. Uh, Grant, Anna, Anna, Callie, Miranda, Christy and Amanda. Oh boy. Thank you so much. Uh, if you support a sponsor, tag them, tag me in a social media post so I can try to thank you on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Let them know you heard about them on the podcast, uh, that their participation is important to you as a person, you know. And that's the p- first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. There's links to resources if you're having a tough time. Uh, there's even some international resources. So take that step and get a little extra help. Get pointed in the right direction and uh, click on the link in our show notes because you you deserve it if you need it and if you need some extra support right now you deserve it okay also the members of our community deserve our support and right now that means uh, letting our voices be heard whether it's uh, supporting the black members of our community and saying black lives matter it's taking a look inward and setting out on a journey to, to get to the you see where like uh, how can i start to undo what's wrong how am i a part of it what, what does privilege mean starting on that journey it's powerful and it's good for everybody it's good for our world so there's going to be resources for you to 
to connect to in our show notes. Uh, and if you've been impacted by racism, there's going to be links uh, for you as well. And the last part of Sleepy Supporter Zone is something I support. And I support uh, American Friends of Hand in Hand. It was a cause uh, that uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg supported. It's a network of integrated public schools where Jewish and Arab uh, children in Israel can learn together and from each other with the hopes of fostering peace, respect, and understanding. And that's American Friends of Hand in Hand. And there'll be a link in our show notes. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it uh, with the Supporter Zone. Mystery Bard, uh, speaking of support, if people want to support you, they could commission a holiday gift, a song, a song from you as a holiday gift, correct? Chris Posty Poster Song Sounds like a near fall Wrote the theme song Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend Also edits episodes Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer, and Ashley runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team Let us down They're on the website I am the Mystery Bard I do the lullabies, yeah I do commissions at JonathanMan.net I'll write a song for you It's almost Christmas, y'all You can tell me the story, yeah you see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your moderators. Get support, dear scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud. Thanks, Mr. Bard. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram, Dearest with a T. Even though I say Dearest, uh, you let that uh, T fall off. Fell asleep already. And make sure you subscribed in your podcast app of choice and that smart speak speed and vocal boost are off and the podcast is playing at 1x speed or slower. Because between the smart speed and people accidentally increasing their speed of the podcast, I get uh, uh, it's just an easier way to consume it. Just do that during the daytime, you know. And if you're new to podcasts, just go on YouTube. Find out what podcasts you watch some videos on you on YouTube about podcasts or about the podcast app you like. And what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts you're thinking about, so thoughts, things on your mind, uh, feelings, so anything coming up for you emotionally, feelings, uh, physical sensations... Uh, changes in time so anything you're thinking about anything you're experiencing emotionally or feeling physically or any of those like so those are some things that keep those are some things that keep me up at night but it, like it could be other stuff i'm only laughing because i said wait a second all those things at different times uh but but i won't look really get into it but uh, or it could be you know changes in time temperature outside noise uh, in you know partner noise you know, pet, no, you know, anything. West End boys, you know, East End girls and West End boys. Uh, I, I mean, I do hear from people that live in like above stuff and you say, it's so noisy down there. Or you say, is that an 80s song reference, Scoots? And I say, hey, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I think so. I think it was in maybe the 90s. I don't know. Pet Shop Boys, right? Is that's not the is that not who's saying that? I don't think it is because it wouldn't make sense. I think it was that London Beat. I'm not sure. And I know I'll think of it later and be embarrassed. Uh, but so where was I? So whatever's keeping you awake, uh, whatever it is, I'm gonna try to take your mind off of stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send my voice across the deep dark night. I'm gonna use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones. Uh, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I'm going to go off topic and uh, do, like, oh, extra words, believe me. But really what I'm going to do, what, what did I, did I, Creaky Dulce Tones, Pointless Meanders? Oh, yeah, extra words, confusion, profusion of confusion. I, I haven't trademarked that, but because uh, there's not really many other uses for it. 
I don't know. We could use it. You could use it in your own like life because uh, you say, "What? Are, how am I feeling?" When you're doing a check in, I don't know if a lot of people do that, but uh, I've been trying to set more time aside for that a little few minute check in. I say, "Well, what, what am I feeling? Can I la- label some of these feelings?" Or, "Well, I'm feeling a profusion of confusion." Could that be? Are there any? Does anybody listen that makes dating apps? Uh, is there like a dating app where you say what your mood is or maybe just in general? Like, is that like you say, well, what's my mood? A profusion of confusion. Or you could say like, because people use it when you're sweating, right? They say I'm sweating profusely. I'm profusely confused. I have confusion pouring out my pores. And that's just a matter of fact. And so if you feel that way, if you're profusely confused, you're in the right place and you may be, that may be meta. If you're new, you could be, you could be confused and you could be having a profusion of confusion. You could be confounded too. Confounded by scoots can, can sometimes result in a confound, confrounction too. Also, I overuse words. Uh, so if you're new, uh, let me check in with you here because just in case that confound, confunction confrounctions happening that's when you're so confounded by me you frown and as a normal here's the thing totally normal reaction to this podcast not out of the ordinary at all a lot of people have that reaction in fact in the high 90 percentile the first time you listen this podcast is very different and it hopefully it stays very different in a good way so all my people that are listening that have been listening for three six nine hundred episodes uh, thanks for being there for me, and I'm glad I can be there for you. So whether you've been listening, this is your first listen or your thousandth, um, it can be conf- like uh, it can be confounding. But it, especially the first few, the, the best advice I can give you is I just read a review that said, just kick back and let the magic happen. And I would just say, but it, what mo- it will be like a, a magician setting up tricks. One time I went to see a magician, a, a team of magicians, two magicians. And it was in L.A. when I volunteered at the Anthony Quinn Library for the summer program. And uh, the librarian had hired two magicians. Now, so I, this was when I was a youngster. I was like 22, 23. And the two magicians arrived, and they were somewhere between 16 and 24. I really don't know. And they were, uh, like, uh, I thought they were great, but they also, like, uh, the kids kept catching their tricks, you know, a little bit. And But I also thought I had to watch them set up and stuff because I was a volunteer. So I guess my point is that uh, this podcast is, like, if you let the magic happen, it's like letting the magician, if you get to a magi- magic show early, and you're watching the magician set up their tricks, but you're not trying to figure the tricks out. You're just like, huh, stuffing a, you're, what are you stuffing a, uh, what is that called? A string? No, it's a rope uh, into, into a bottle. Pleasant watching you do that. Uh, I'm not even going to ponder what the trick is for, or if you're like, uh, if it's an illusion or magic, I'm just watching you do, I'm just watching a magician set up. Like, I, and not everybody has a brain to do that. I do, unfortunately. I mean, sometimes, I guess because I'm always surprised. I could watch my magic trick. Like, it, it, I'm just one of those people. I watched all those specials. I talk about this on the intro all the time. And then I see it again. I say, I can watch one of those magic, behind the magic person or whatever. I mean, I have to, you know, as long as it's five years apart, I say, wait, how are they going to do that again? I say, I have no idea. And then a lot of times I watch it and I still say, how did they, what the, how, what in the, like for a little while I thought David Blaine was magic. I mean, even when I was watching this, even though I knew it wasn't, I said, this is like magic, but this would be the other side of it. You're still like, this isn't magical watching you set up, but uh, I'm not really paying attention. I'm barely paying attention to you setting up your tricks. Uh, so if you could consume the podcast, I know that's confusing and maybe confounding and perplexing but uh if you could consume the podcast in that way kind of a kicked back uninterested way that's the that was like one piece of advice i got recently from a listener and give the show a few tries so just like kind of barely pay attention to the podcast so this is a podcast you barely listen to it's also a sleep podcast that's not really here to put you to sleep i'm here to keep you company as you drift off the shows are about an hour 
so you have plenty of time. Or if you can't sleep, I'm here to keep you company uh, to the very end. So whether you're awake or asleep, I'm here for you. So those are a couple things. Um, what else do you, I need you to know? So podcast you don't listen to, podcast, podcast you hear, keep you company as you drift off. Oh, structurally, what to expect. This can throw new listeners off. And I guess understandably, so show starts off with a greeting, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary, and my beautiful bakers, because tonight we're doing Great British Bake Off or Great British Baking Show. Uh, so that's the greeting. So you feel welcome. You know, you're, this is a welcoming place. Then there's the business. The business about six minutes or something. Maybe sometimes I ramble more. That's how we're able to bring the podcast twice a week to you. Then there's an intro where I ramble for about 12 to 20 minutes. And some new listeners can have, like, they don't know where the business ends and the uh, intro begins. The intro is, like, where I introduce the show, explain how it works, and never get to, I barely ever get to a point because I go off topic so much. So you kind of get an idea of what to expect. For the first 20 minutes, I'm here keeping you company and explaining you what the podcast is. I mean, just to go back to that magician, if they were saying, yeah, well, here's what I'm doing. I'm stuffing a rope in a bottle. And later what I'll do is, uh, you know, I'll be tying some knots on this here rope. Um, and I may, you may notice, uh, you know, that the rope, the bottle, this is the old bottle climbs the rope trick. Uh, not a trick, though. It's a, not an illusion. It's the bottle climbs the rope. Uh, and also, uh, you know, I like to add some comedy in. So um, I also have a misdirect where, you know, I have a double misdirect where I like the trick, the trick fails twice. And then on the third time, you know, the one time the bottle doesn't, you know, bottle deflates like uh, then another time the rope does the rope barks at me like a dog. And so you may, at that point, you may tune out. I mean, unless you're in, really into magic and understanding magic, I more appreciate, ma I, I appreciate it. I don't, uh, I don't have the dexterity to be doing magic. I mean, except for the magic of keeping your company and taking your mind off stuff, but that's a whole different illusion. I do it with the, with the gummies in my brain. So, uh, what was my, oh, the intro is a bit like that. And so for a new listener, it can really throw you off. But for a regular listener, it's something uh, 90, high 90 percentile of listeners enjoy listening to. And there's nothing wrong with not liking the intros. In fact, you could skip them. Regular listeners either uh, start the show at 20 minutes or they subscribe on Patreon where they get story-only episodes. Uh, but for like most listeners, the intro is part of their wind down routine or their bedtime routine. So they'll start playing it before they get in bed or as they're getting in bed, as they get comfortable, as they're doing some sort of other like wind down or some people are falling asleep right now. Good night. Uh, you look so cute there. Yeah. Poofity, poofity, poo. I just went my magic wand and, uh. Oh, there's where the bottle is. The bottle popped out of my magic wand. That would be a magic trick. And then they catch it, and it's like a real glass bottle. Some magician, a magician listening, you could do that. I mean, you could figure out the the, the magic part of it. Um, but I would I would clap for that. I would be like, oh my goodness, that's a real bottle. There's no way it could fit in a magic wand. And because it's glass, I would assume that there's no sort of trickery because you can't really. So I say, how did that person do that? I thought it was going to be flowers. Um, oh, sorry, I'm in the middle of a podcast intro. So just see, as you as you start to become a regular listener, you can kind of adjust and see how you like to listen to the intro. But just realize the intro's here to give you some distance away from the day and to start to drift away. Because for me, I know I can't fall asleep right away. It just never has worked for me. So anything that involves someone else telling me or some sort of step-by-step -step process where at the end of it, I'm supposed to be asleep doesn't work. It's more like slowly turning down the volume. So that's really what the intro is here for. It's long and dragged out because uh, I want to like get away. You know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I think that makes sense. Uh, then there'll be some business between the intro and the episode. And then we will talk about uh, the great, the uh, second half of the first episode of the ninth, uh, 
I don't know. We'll talk about part of an episode of the Great British Baking Show or Great British Bake Off. And, oh, boy, will it be a treat. I think, uh, you know, it's, it'll be rolling like a wagon wheel. So that's the structure. Oh, and then the show ends with uh, thank yous. So that's the structure of the show. I think the only th- other things you need to know is that, uh, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, give the podcast a few tries. The reason I make the show, because I've been there. I know how it feels tossing and turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. So I just want to help if I can. And then also, you deserve a good night's sleep. It's just a fact. And I would like to live in a world where you're rested and you're flourishing. And if I could take part in that and help, it's great. But if you're doing it, that's even better. Like you getting to live the life you, you, you know, your life more fully. Holy cow. That's really an honor to, to assist in that in any way I can. So that's it. That's the structure of the show. Uh, that, I think that's everything you need to know. Other than give it a few tries, see how it goes. You got nothing to lose, really. I mean, except for uh, frowns. Um, you know, that's a common, a common experience. So if I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate you checking the show out. All you regular listeners, I, I love you. I mean, thank you so much for coming back time after time and supporting this podcast and your appreciation. I couldn't do it without all of you. I work hard, I yearn, and I strive, and I really want to help you fall asleep. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do this for you twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here, and I'm here to talk about therapy. I work with a licensed professional therapist uh, on a regular basis, and it has been so beneficial in my life. And if you're out there thinking about it, you know, you're, you're dealing with something, you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe it's anxiety, maybe you just want to make some changes in your life, and you want to have someone there to listen and to help you with issues. Uh, a professional therapist is an amazing, for me, life-changing resource. So whatever is anxiety, grief, depression, relationships, uh, sleep, anything you're dealing with, a licensed professional therapist can help. And with BetterHelp, all you do is simply fill out a questionnaire to help assess your basic needs, and then you get matched with your counselor in under 48 hours. From there, you can easily schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages to communicate with your therapist at your convenience. And everything you share is confidential. If for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time at no additional charge. So you can find someone you feel good with, which is just another important part of the process. It's just another safe place for you to find. Join the 1 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp counselor. BetterHelp is an affordable option for our listeners and get 10% off your first month with the discount code SLEEPWITHME. That's one word, SLEEPWITHME. Get started Started today at B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com. That's betterhelp dot com slash sleep with me. Talk to a therapist online and get help. Betterhelp dot com slash sleep with me for ten percent off your first month. Thanks everybody. All right, everybody. I was just trying to think of a fancy word for teeth, uh, sp- sp- but if you saw mine, you'd say those are sparklers. Uh, but really, my favorite part of uh, working with Quip, uh, our amazing sponsor, is when I go to my dentist and she says, wow, you're really flossing. Because not only does Quip make amazing uh, smart toothbrushes, they have amazing options for flossing on a regular basis. I don't know if you've tried floss picks or different kind of flosses. We all know you got to floss every day. It's it's really that simple, especially if you want that sweet, sweet smile from your dentist. You deserve, like, just like you deserve a good night's sleep, your, your teeth are saying, hey, yo, get up here and floss us. Uh, how about it? But Quip has a brand new reusable floss pick. Uh, you're going to want it. I mean, the pop-up floss dispenser was amazing. This thing's even better. It has a durable handle that's easy to guide, and it restrings with a click. It has a compact mirrored dispensing case for on the go, but it lasts. It has a single refill pod that replaces over 180 single-use plastic flossers, so it's easier to use. It's great for your teeth, and it's good for the environment. And if you don't use a pick, if you haven't seen it, check out our sponsor page so you can see my videos of my pop-up floss dispenser, too. And and if you're going to put in an order, equip, get the electric toothbrush. Uh, It's got those amazing features, the timed sonic vibrations uh, with guided pulses that help you brush better, get get your whole mouth clean. 
clean. They have anti-cavity toothpaste and mint and watermelon. And their new Quip uh, smart electric toothbrush, you connect it to the Quip app. It really reinforces those healthy habits. You can earn amazing rewards like free products and discounts. You could get that streak going. Quip also delivers a brush head floss and toothpaste refills every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money and skip the store. It just comes to you on a regular basis. Just another thing I love about Quip, but mostly it's that my dentist is proud of me, and it's because Quip makes it so easy. So you can bring delight to your everyday brushing and join over 5 million mouths brushing with Quip starting at just $25. Mr. Bart, what's the, uh, what's the promo code? Brush your teeth. That's right. If you go to getquip.com slash sleep right now, you get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash sleep. That's getquip.com slash sleep. Quip, better oral health made simple. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, this is Scoots. We're talking about the Great British Bake Off and... uh uh, we're talking about a uh, series uh, or collection six on Netflix. In the U.S., it's called The Great British Baking Show. And we're talking about uh, Biscuit Week, Biscuits Week, uh, episode one. We're talking about the second half of the episode. But first, I'm going to kind of run through all of my written notes because I'm still getting a feel for how we're going to do this uh, to make it the most sleepy and enjoyable. So, yeah, I'll run through all my notes and then uh, we'll run through the episode. Maybe that way I can get a little bit more into the visuals with it making even less sense. And that way you see, well, I didn't listen to part one of episode. So your episode one has two parts and also the seasons don't correspond in England and the U.S. Uh, it's able to U.K. Yeah, or just a non-U.S. Yeah, because I guess there's a company in the U.S. that likes to have great British, great bake, you know, they, they have bake-offs. Imagine if I started the Easy Bake Show, I, like they'd shut me right down. Another company, probably. Okay, so it opens with the episode, like I still haven't done the research, but I've seen enough of a great British bake-off to know it starts with a little comedy with Sandy and Noel. Uh, and, uh, they do Doc Brown and Marty McFly. And also remember that biscuit is kind of like a cookie. August 28th uh, to August 30th, 2018. Uh, then we see lambs, plants, and ducks, uh, nature, sun, stream, peaceful place. Uh, wish I felt peaceful, someone says, inside. Nerve wracking. Not as stressful as my thesis. Surreal. Uh, they don't, uh, the actual, but people, oh, there's more people have been in space than in that tent. 12 new bakers, 30 challenges. Uh, great goal. Uh, once uh, the Great British Baking Show. Sky shot, fields, flowers. Uh, Music, voiceover, it's Sandy, all smiles, hello, 24 regional biscuits, so stylish, everyone looks great, comedy, rules at the same time, a little much, a uh, little much for no, 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 two hours, bake, action, butter, it difficult to make in rules, repeat twice. This is like a recipe for how to make up a, a, like a confusing podcast recap. Butter out, uh, expectations, profiles, uh, perfection, first baker, briny, empire biscuits, yellow stained glass, uh, cool shirt, Bristol twist, regional biscuit, Sandy gives love, briny and daughter, Play-Doh, lots of laughs. And then the artwork, apple cider example, crystallized apple slice, vanilla shortbread. She has boiled egg yolks uh, to, to teach his Paul, who is not super nice. Uh, Sandy V.O., lemon by, do- lemon by, 
duck paired with oh dan duck paired with park with kids uh lemon shrewsberries uh noel rolls up to chat and joke so nice manon cottage cream eggs and family a gaelic flair hazelnut cornish shortbread Brittany in france clotted cream ruby dried herbs uh, cream substitute trains and boxing killer combination of cardamom clove and cinnamon uh, uh let's see devon flats a soft medium oh but i put julian even though it's null because i guess it's two so. vo warning coconut and fennel uh, Rahul, uh, Paul gives him a hard time, talks too much, question mark. Love his shirt, white and blue, faded stripe, a denim shirt. Nuclear scientist, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, dad wants him to get a haircut. Pithicanty Bannock. Uh, whole fennel, and even Sandy gives him a hard time about talking. Imelda. Northern Ireland, hearty oats, cherry and white chocolate, oatmeal biscuits, wholemeal flour, Sandy and Ta- Paul talking, BM, Luke, li- Luke like a citrusy, uh, civil servant, DJ in Sheffield, the balance of lime and ginger, also has good shirts, uh, Noel, spoil, line, mountain, one hour, Oh, Spotlight, uh, What's My Line? That's what that says. Uh, great comedy team. VO, size, shape, sandwich biscuits, twice the work. Anthony, Bollywood, turmeric and caraway, goose narg cakes in shape of a, pa- pa- uh, what is that called? Is that paisley? Uh, mango, chili, uh, he dances with Sandy. You're the most fun person. Start to chill the dough, uh, resting the dough, talking clips and sauce. John Aberfrau biscuit, uh, John wife and kids sailing and eating, uh, something buttercream shortbread shell, butterscotch buttercream. That was like, that was, uh, I marked that as one of the many uses of alliteration. Uh, Kim Joy has an awesome popsicle shirt, uh, cool. Purple blue uh, hair tips on her hair. Uh, talks about bath and uh, hair conditioner taster like I am. Orange blossom, orange blossom York biscuits, white rose. Lovejoy cracks up. Uh, Noel antique stealer. Uh, Karen's white rose. Uh, she's a product promoter. Yorkshire Perkins with uh, Mace uh, Wakefield. Terry, little lambs, uh, his horse won't go. Terry, Lake G- District, ginger shortbread. Intro over, voiceover, uh, voiceover about the, the risks. Uh, kiss goodbye, uh, eyes and talk on Overwatch. Uh, try not to stress or panic. Uh, extra, uh, something, exterior shot, Sandy, radio fun, blue radio prop. Uh, uh, out of order sequence batch, uh, uh, speed it up. It's hot in here. Piping and decorating. Five minutes left. Uh, uh, tie, uh, snack time while everyone else uh, flies. Uh, tea, chocolate troubles. Then this is underlined. People help one another. Uh, wow. Set the mood time. Uh, all sitting, voiceover of a judgment. Anthony colors, loves the psychedelic. Uh, uh, him and Prue match. Paul choose a lot. Happy, well done. Prue and Julian, I made the mistake again. Both eat and run. Her blue glasses, dresses and necklace pop. Bracelets match. Pot noodle. John, undercooked, extremely neat man. And Peru, uh, crack, uh, cracks, uh, her crack and pop, uh, fantastic. Manon says, the milk is here. John cheers her on. 
like owl feathers. Uh, 25, I'm bad at math. Uh, uh, take T, Dan, tough, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Uh, like, uh, yeah, that was one of those things. Uh, terrible. Terry, this is interesting. Like a Warhol print. Uh, little head, great flavor. A rough old biscuit. You can do it, ginger nut. You can breathe now. More chats. Uh, indeed, very oaty, delicious. Looks good, uniform. Shortbread today. Blows your mind. Brew. Use a fork. Wrong biscuit, wrong time. Lambs. A second mystery. It's time for the technical challenge. Off you go, bouncy castle joke. Uh, get your wagon rolling. Do not P A N I C V O. All the same ingredients. Wagon wheel. Crew and Paul have tea and talk wagon wheels without worrying. Prep time. Uh, Sandy's never had a wagon wheel. I tried a hot noodle before. He's speechless. Need the dough. Uh, marshmallow. Sandy gives uh, gives him mixer to mellow. One hour gone. Seven centimeter circles. Bake for twelve minutes. Gone on biscuit. Greatly cooking. Oh, gently cooling chocolate worries. Uh, chocolate moves. Uh, Thirty minutes left. Uh, piping. Serious spillage. How much? Paul. Full coverage. Ruby. Looks good. One minute. Runs like the wind. Uh, proper disaster. Shabby. Flood that gap. Uh, desperate measures. One minute. Run like the wind. Time is up. High five. Gingham table. Blue. Cut is perfect. Uh, half st- silky. Brew likes it neat. Uh, too much uh, chocolate. Oh, not, uh, but you got to have enough to hold it in. Too much marshmallow if the chocolate can't hold it in. Quite delighted. Uh, Anthony, highs, lows, tomorrow. Wheeling wagon. Night owl, next day, same outfits. And now it's a showstopper challenge. Uh, a biscuit is a selfie portrait, uh, fiendish. Is that what it says? Uh, layers of biscuits, bond the biscuit, Terry, top of the game. 3D work of art. Cinnamon and orange, uh, come back on train. Bristol something. Cockapoo, uh, dog. Rahul has a uh, blue band aid on. Yeah, I noticed I said he must, this must be this next day. He has got a blue band aid on. Uh, Ruby 40 biscuits. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Sweetly, let's go with less, but he cracks her up. Anthony's, uh, uh, something. Karen's holiday home. There's more alliteration. Moonwalk away. Uh, Deus uh, sugar almond cookies. This sounds good. Uh, Luke's mad night out. Royal icing versus buttercream. Gin o'clock, somebody said. Match or matcha, maybe. The, I don't know. That might have been another episode. White chocolate. Punchy spices. Playing power walk, playing pong. Oh, they're playing ping pong. Robust biscuits, brandy stamp, snap, moldable. Imelda, burnt, uh, one hour, make magic, com versus not com. Uh, Terry's not very worried, so is Imelda, burnt, uh, cannot bond. Matcha ganache, uh, Kim Joy, artist, uh, painting, ruby, severe breakages, the colors. You look a bit like Bjork. Uh, uh, Terry, uh, Terry's not, it's not going well for Terry. Dan and Anthony, good art. Uh, you look a bit frantic. Uh, one minute sighing shots. Lots of shots, lots of close-ups. Time is up. Great edits. Uh, please put selfies at the end of your workstation. 
Ruby, Manon, Dan, Kim Joy. Uh, what what one you holding? Zoom. Kim Joy X three. Show show stopping selfie. So that's another one. Prawn or baby? Oh, that was on Dan's. Uh, Dan good. Kim Joy good. Tiny bit more spice. Uh, bit soft. Very next. Uh, precise. Balance, lovely lemon curd. Raul gets called up. Uh, Dame Edma and Sue Pollard. Raul walks backwards, thumbs up, a nice spacing, quite simple. Brew cuts her up. Uh, biscuit, bland, thick and dry, stale. Lots of concerned faces. Uh, strange taste of ginger, briny. Colors, balloons, more flavor, man and nods. Excellent, uh, exquisite, just a hint, hint of matcha. Terry called up, ingenious, well done. Man and cheers him on, smiles, a scrape through. First week nerves, tea and talk. Background, hand holding, shaking, wonderfully nutty. Man and hugs. Falls to me. Sad news, it's Imelda. Hugs and tears, Ruby arm guard. Aw, sad. Even judges hug. Uh, Ruby feels a little bit bad. Week one done. Pull my socks up. Manon calls someone. Papa. Tears of joy. She was a star baker. So that's a whole... So that's like the whole notes of my notes from the episode. Then we'll pick it up at the... um. Signature challenge. What do they call it? The showstopper. And let's just see what we see here with how my notes will actually get a little bit more immersed. Uh, see, Kim Joy, uh, people are raising their hands. I just saw Terry had something on his finger. Uh, Ruby, I think Ruby comes in first with the uh, wagon wheels. Uh, let's see, Ruby's guess. Yeah, so I was feeling pretty rubbish this morning. Ruby has a nice red dress on with flowers. And everyone has the same tan apron. So this is where everybody this is where everybody goes home now. I don't know where everybody sleeps on this show. I'm really curious about the production because it sounds like they have to go back to like they must shoot this on the weekends and everybody goes back to their job during the week. Okay, but everybody has the same clothes on. I don't know if they get laundered between nights or how that works. I mean, it would be a concern of mine because I cannot. Actually, I can wear clothes for 24 hours, but after that, I say, no, no, no. Like, after I've showered, I can't. Because um, usually, just as, this is TMI, but I take a shower in the afternoons after I work out or run. So then I put on clean clothes. Then I go to bed at night, and then I'll put on the same clothes until I take a shower again. So it's like I wear my clothes from like 4 p.m., like a 24-hour period between 4 p.m. and 3 p.m. Okay, so everybody's putting their flour and butter in, and they're, what they have to do is make a, This is really hard. They have to make a selfie. Like basically, they have to make a giant biscuit with a selfie of them with different other biscuits on there and, and art and, and frosting and stuff. So really this, and again, this is my first time consuming this show. So to me, I'm like, holy cow, not only do you have to be able to bake, you have to be able to draw and do art. And a lot of uh, like pouring, then close-ups of people's faces, and then chopping, chopping some lemon, putting sugar in, uh, like a lot of concern. I was saying, huh, well, and then sometimes talking where they try to get people. Terry's got to be at the top of the game, famous last words. And then always the risks. Well, don't make it too tough. Don't make it too soft. Uh, I love shortbread, so this really interests me, all, all of these ones. And seeing uh, John doing some microplaning of the citrus. It looks like oranges. Yeah, he's doing a lemon curd sun with butter. Like he's doing a, a, a one of him on a, um, like his face in front of a sea with a sailboat. Idyllic sailing conditions, he thought. Uh, I think he's telling a story about one time. Uh, 
then they say, meanwhile, back on dry land, Bryony's doing one of her on the left of her head and then her kind of like with a very uh, a scenic scene behind her bridge river and some sailboats. So a lot of frosting, too, which could be interesting. Oh, then, yeah, the, like, uh, Noel says, okay, tell me about your cockapoo. I need to know because I'm a method actor. Raul says uh, he's got his, he does have um, a cut on his finger. So he's making his first spring in the U.K. So it's him on the right side and then kind of like a duck, a goose pond, it looks like. And he says it's a very ambitious design. Triple layered 40 biscuit design. That's Ruby. She's made, she's going, uh, her finishing the London Marathon. And uh, crystallized ginger. She's going to have a gold leaf where she's holding up her, uh, like it looks like gingerbread too. It looks tasty. And she's never successfully finished this because she's, so it sounds like she, they've practiced during the week. Uh, and now everybody's rolling out their biscuits. That's a sequence. And then putting them in the oven smoothing their biscuits, patting them, rubbing them down like a space, a safe place. And a lot of people are doing like a backing biscuit, like a, what do you call that? The, the um, canvas. Uh, let's see, John's doing his waves. John's pretty warm. Uh, and then, uh, say, are you Mr. Sweaty? Sandy said that to him. Okay. And Ruby had a setback of uh, too much. Uh, Anthony's doing when he count, climbed count Mount Kilimanjaro, 558.95 meters in November 2016. Ginger and cinnamon bang on. So that's, that's another cookie. Ginger and cinnamon, that sounds like a good cookie. Half the bakers are doing trips abroad. Karen's doing uh, France. She has a holiday home there. Oh, and that's what they say. Her selfie looks a bit like Dame Edna. Uh, wonderful flavor combination, if it turns out, Bruce said. But don't overdo the rose water. Uh, this is, that's when Edna uh, does a moonwalk. Uh, Dan's doing Palm Springs uh, when his husband and him went and uh, uh, picked up their, when they first met their kids, uh, so it's, uh, but the, it's him holding one of the babies. That's what they say. Is that a prawn mango royal icing? That sounds tasty too. Then Luke, who's kind of a younger one, he's saying he's doing this uh, wild trip he had to Las Vegas, mad night out, uh, with his friends on holiday in Las Vegas, uh, Dan's in the foreground with glasses and then some Las Vegas landmarks in the background. And he says, I associate cinnamon with America. So it's a little cinnamon in there. Eight minutes. Ruby and Dan are using eight minute uh, timers. Glacier mints. So that's what uh, Raul's using for his uh, glasses. And you can see this is like as much a mental game as it is if you watch it. Because, uh, like, you just see the, the stress impacting people. Flour butter cream should be like a thick, thick custard. Terry says he's using a uh, left, uh, r- left to right, right-handed uh, routine. A lot of right-handers. It looks like though. I just needed some bread earlier today. It was right-handed, and I'm left-handed. I need it with my right hand. Yeah, I keep an eye out if I see somebody. Hopefully, oh, Manon's doing uh, a visit to a mountain too. But I made like, uh, she's, so she's putting matcha buttercream, so a little green. Yep, it's good, she says. Oh, yeah, Japan and Kim Joy. Two people going to uh, uh, trips in Japan. Now, Kim Joy, you could even see her using different colors to, like, I don't know what she was using for the coloring to make the right shades for her night sky, like sunset. And ginger and cinnamon, quite strong on ginger. Yeah, then we have a rising exterior shot, and then uh, Sandy and uh, Noel are playing ping pong with books, cookbooks. And now stuff's starting to come out of the oven. Anemic biscuits, Dan says. Uh, you got to make sure they're baked. Uh, like uh, To add depth to robust biscuits, uh, that they'll layer on top of one another. Uh Terry, Terry's taking a different approach, so Terry is making a brandy snap biscuit, which is a moldable material. 
and it comes out like a, and you have a small window to shape it. So he's going to shape it into a three-dimensional uh, version of Terry, uh, of his face. Brandy snap selfie. And really for Terry, this was all or nothing. Like if he didn't do good here, I, I had a feeling he was not going to make it. So he's very pleasant and his horse would not go. Watching the mixers mix the butters, nice and calming. His brandy snap biscuit did look like it had maybe some uh, sesame seeds in there or something. I don't know. Imelda's doing a fun day out in Mayo, a seaside selfie. Another alliteration, though I'm not keeping count anymore. Uh, and then Sandy says, she says, my biscuits are burnt. Sandy says, no, they look colorful. And Imelda's stressed. And we have another shot from the one of the fields, like uh, maybe a, like a, a drone shot. Uh, Let's make some magic, somebody says. Uh, backboard biscuits on the backboard. Oh, so they do have a backboard? Oh, they do, yeah. So they do have one uh, board that is not food behind their biscuits. This is a bit like a science project or something, you know, you do craft at school. Terry just said, oh, my goodness. Uh, and, uh, oh, yeah, because one of his biscuits burned. Oh, Terry. And Ruby's running behind. She's got a little flower on her face. Kim Joy is pouring out some caramel for a firm bond. Hope it stays together, Raul says. Uh, he has two. He also has a piece of tape. On, oh, no, that's, is that Raul? Or, uh, no, that's the other guy, John. John has Band-Aid, too. And a, like, a clear thing, tape on his finger. Now we're getting into the high speed, like uh, people are putting their ganache on with the tubing things, uh, adding some mountain and foliage. Ooh, Dan's like, uh, wait a second, I got to rewind it. Dan may have been uh, stirring very fast with his left hand. Let's see, we got John talking now, John placing. Uh, that's a right hander painting. I don't know who that was, but this is the one. Ruby placing. Ruby's right-handed, maybe. Man, tough to say. Oh, no, the Dan's right-handed. Oh, wait. Yeah, Dan's right-handed, it looks like. That's the right hand, right? Yeah. Don't worry, I'll find a lefty, probably. Um, uh, Sandy's testing out some Ruby's biscuits uh, and giving her a hard time. First she said it's not good, then she said it's delicious. Then Kim Joy's really using a lot of colors. Uh, I don't know how she found the time uh, to create a night sky. Oh, this is a severe, break, severe breakage uh, from Ruby. Half hour left. Uh, so now they're like doing shots of everybody in a frantic motion. Uh, some people are painting. Uh, some people are assembling. Uh, Karen said she's proud of her nose. Uh, Somebody else said, I'm looking like the Joker. Stay calm. That was Imelda. Briny, they say, oh, yeah, you look like Bjork. Bjorkness. Uh, and she said, someone says I look like Michael McIntyre. Uh, marshmallow fondant. Ruby's covered in that. Uh, Kim Joy's painting Kim Joy with blue hair. Imelda's doing grass. Her grass looks good. Terry's looks... Uh, like, very impressionistic. Uh, yeah, you see, Raul's uh, very calm, even though, like, he's focused. Uh, Anthony's, like, very joyful. Ruby's kind of, a, like, a, like a balanced out. Uh, oh, Dan's biscuit cracked. Oh, but Dan is very, uh, very, like, artistic, cartoon-wise. Uh, now the final uh, thing, uh, Imelda's kind of feeling like she says, Jesus is turning out hideous. Ruby calls herself Rubes there. Uh, okay, they say time is up, but I think everybody like either gets more time or it's not exact. Uh, say, oh my goodness, put your selfies at the end of your workstation. Okay, then Ruby and Manon are kind of talk, talk, like doing a post to the, saying, hey, and uh, Kim Joy says, Dan, what are you holding? Uh, and he goes, a baby. She goes, oh, I thought it was something else uh, that's uh, pink and uh, 
Somebody says, like, uh, it didn't. It doesn't look like that. Uh, I don't know if she was saying that because of TV. Now it's, uh, okay, first up is Dan for the judging. He carries it up. He stands it up. Nothing falls off that I can see. And it pops. The colors are really good. Artistically great, three-dimensional, colorful. That's when Paul says, it looks like you're holding a prawn, though. Everybody laughs. But, yeah, the colors, outlines. Uh, so they take the sun as a biscuit to eat. I don't know if Dan got to pick that or not. They say, okay, passion fruit, very good blend, almond, nice biscuit, Dan. Uh, Bruce says, excellent. Dan smiles. Uh, Kim Joy, they say, holy cow, you, this is artistic. You can see it's sunset, sunset uh, well balanced. They say, okay, your biscuit could use more spice. Kim Joy agrees. Then Luke's, what happens in Las Vegas? His has like a depth because uh, it has a couple layers. Uh, and they say, okay, cinnamon and orange, uh, it works, but the biscuits are a bit soft. So Dan makes a frown. Anthony, uh, the Kilimanjaro, very precise. It looks like him. And they say it's certainly gingerbread. Gorgeous balance of uh, cinnamon and ginger, really good. Then John, John's turned out pretty good. Some lumpy lemon curd. He goes, yeah, my lemon curd didn't cook out. A little bit overcooked, uh, but good flavors, lovely. Cinnamon and orange. Biscuits spectacular, according to Paul, though. Uh, Raul uh, goes up. He walks very slowly and gingerly, but his, like, uh, he also has a lake. Uh, they say, it's Explosion of English Spring. Really fascinated by your portrait. Uh, and they say, oh, like, well, how come it doesn't have stubble? He goes, oh, because I was seven years younger because he has kind of a beard now. And they say, well, it's recognizable. They say the biscuit's nice and short. Mm, ginger comes through well-baked beautifully. And we love your face. Uh, fantastic, great job. And the Sandy and they'll say, well done. And then that's when he walks backwards, then turns around halfway. Everybody laughs at him. But not in a mean way, in a friendly way. Karen does uh, like one, like a where she's drinking wine in the sun. But hers has a lot of bright reds, and she's wearing red. But they can't get the rose water. Get the cardamom, uh, but not the rose water, Karen. She goes, I guess they didn't put enough in. And they go, well, it looks great. Uh, we got to put it, give some kick, give some oomph. Now, Melda's did not, they say, okay, it's simple. We recognize you. Uh, but then they go to eat her selfie. Dan or Paul, like, is not nice. He chops it like it, uh, in half with a knife. Uh, everybody's watching on very studious. They say, yeah, bland, thick, dry, stale shortbread. Oh boy. You get the lemon, but not the ginger. Uh, yeah. And then they get shots, everybody worrying and concerned. Then we have Ruby's gingerbread marathon selfie. And hers is like halfway finished, so she's very stressed. Uh, she goes, too ambitious. I think I was doing too much. She just didn't get enough time to uh, frost it. Uh, and they say it's more a little bit generic. Uh, and they say, okay, let's try it, though. Cinnamon and ginger. So they eat it. They say, strange taste of ginger. You do get the cinnamon, but they're fighting for supremacy. Biscuit's a bit soft, a bit dry. Paul's like uh, merciless, I guess. Uh, he goes, it's a shame you didn't finish it. She goes, yeah, brutal. So she's down. Oh, wow, Briny's really is worth uh, looking at, too. Sorry, Briny. Like, in the first five times I watched this, like, I appreciated other things you did. But I did not catch the colors on this biscuit. Uh, there's only six minutes left in the episode if you want to catch the time. And I paused it for our convenience. So it has like a bridge at Bristol. It's in Bristol. A Bristol biscuit selfie. So triple alliteration. There's three uh, hot air balloons in the sky. Clouds and uh, blue sky. Then a bridge. And then the, uh, what I'm assuming is a river two sailboats on the river and then the right side of the river is like a row of uh 
kind of pastel colored uh, townhouses, uh, or in New York, as you could call it, like a walk up or brownstone, but really popping colors on the balloons and like somewhat of a shine in there. Then Briss, Br- uh, Br- Briny's on the left, and it looks a lot like her. She has on like a coat. Uh, like a yellow coat, is, and I don't know, it looks a lot like her. I mean, I only watched this episode, and I say, that's definitely briny. And then there's like a, like a nice flourishes of the water, the sky, uh, and, and the forest in, in greens and blues. Uh, so just, I don't know, well done in my opinion. Let's see what they say, though. Portrait works. I love the balloons. Can we eat a balloon? Yes, please do. Paul cuts a balloon in three. Nice thin icing. I like that. Uh, everybody watches. Like, that's another good one. So there's like, a, as Paul and Prue take bites, they show Raul and Madden, and their mouths are kind of like opening. Like, uh, they say, okay, not a, need more flavor, more of a punch. Okay, okay. But Imelda, or uh, Madden says, well, that's good, Brian. Good work. Then we have Manon's, uh, excellent, Paul says, and a very precise, uh, neat and detailed, exquisite. They cut it three ways. Uh, Prue tries it. Uh, she was nervous that the matcha would be overpowering, but not at all. It's just a hint. Uh, it's a uh, wow, Paul says, a delicious uh, flavors, textures, amazing job. So that's good. And she shakes it up, brings it back. Some people are kind of glaring at her. Terry, bring up your biscuit selfie. Terry brings his, Terry has a barbell mustache. I, I, don't, I think I forgot to mention that so far. And a very serious face. In, in like, uh, But they say ingenious. And Terry looks like he's about to cry. It's sort of Manon and Ruby because they like uh, brandy snap, buttercream jam, delicious. They're blown away. And I said, can't believe you did a brandy snap in that size. That's difficult. And then you got a lot of color in there. Very clever, Paul says. Well done, Terry. Everybody's kind of, well, some people are happy. Manon says, well done, Terry, too. But Imelda, they stop and, and so show that Imelda's sad. And Ruby, they're worried, you know. And Terry goes, I think I'm going to make it. Uh, and because everybody, out of those three, they had two, I think everybody had one good bake and two bad bakes. Uh, so they say, oh boy, who's going to go home? I don't know. So they were interview Melda, Ruby, and uh, Terry. And they show them they're actually just having to be sitting all in a row, all with concerned looks. The sun starts to go down. Paul and Prue must decide who's going to be the star baker. And alas, who will be the first? Uh, and then they sit, they have a tea. Oh, this is a nice look. So let's see to pause it. Uh, so they have a quick scene here where they have, they did some voiceover. They have all the bakers lined up. But then they have uh, Paul, Brew, Noel, and uh, Sandy all sitting at a table. All of the biscuit selfies, the people's faces are on plates and they're having tea around there. And let's see, the bottom row is uh, Briny, Ruby, uh, uh, Raul, uh, Kim Joy, then the, the Luke, Manon, Terry, Dan, top left. The top three, I can't, I guess Karen, John, who do we still have left? Uh, what do we got? Somebody with blue hair. Oh, Luke. Oh, no. Luke's over there. Karen and John. Uh, oh, Melda and Anthony. Uh, I don't see Anthony, though. But I guess his is ex- obscured by grass. There's some grass there. But, yeah, they talk. Oh, it was amazing. Got to know them quicker this time. Uh, we have their portraits in front of us. Hardy, har, har. So who's rising to the top? Well, Manon, classically French, uh, good baking, precision. Briny, impressive, uh, sh- solid showstopper. 
And then they say, who's struggling? Well, Terry, today you came coming in was struggling, but he pulled a rabbit out of a hat, uh, like an impressionist painting. Did he do enough? We don't know. Imelda, she struggled in the technical, and Biscuit wasn't good today. Uh, she has a lot to prove pressure. Then Ruby, first in technical, but the other two, not as good. Uh, and Sandy says, I'm going to be sad to see one of them go. I already, and they say, agreed. Now the sun's almost setting. We go back to the tent. They line up. The bakers are waiting. Some of them are holding hands, which is very cute. Uh, Imelda's very nervous. Uh, and they say, okay, well, first we're going to say the star baker. Wonderfully nutty first round. Attention to detail, unbelievable. They think Manon knows she has it. Star Baker, Manon. Dan makes this like laughing face. Uh, like, he's, like, I don't know. They, uh, Bryony, Manon, hug. Ian Sandy says, I got to give the sad news now. And it's Ruby and Manon are really holding each other because they say it's one of us. Uh, and they're like, uh, like flinching. And they say, Melda. They say, uh, Dan gives her a hug. Ruby holds her head. Then hugs Melda. Some people are patting her back. Sandy hugs her first. Dan hugs Ruby. Then Ruby hugs Melda. This was a different time when you could, you know, this was a hugging time. And it's in England, you know. Karen hugs Melda. They were interviewing Melda, who's down. She has to walk away. She's so down. Understandably, very understandably. Prue hugs Ruby. Prue has a nice blue watch on. Ruby kind of talks about, man, I just got by. Dan hug or Paul hugs Ruby. And she says, I'm relieved. Uh, Terry, Melda says, well done. Terry hugs him. Uh, then everybody's hugging. Uh, yeah, and they say, then they're kind of like looking back and saying, wow, what a wonderful weekend. Okay, so that helps me. I guess they must, yeah, film it on like Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday. Manon calls in uh, to France. This is a one the first episode. She's outside in front of a fence. And again, a really high production value. Holy moly. We'll see what comes next. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the episode. Uh, so yeah, really exciting. I think, uh, let me just do it just to be sure though, because I'm not sure. I think last episode I did go over uh, the wagon wheel challenge, but just in case I didn't. I mean, I kind of did in my notes, but basically, like, uh, just in case, because I said, I don't, I don't know where I left off last episode. Like, uh, that's the technical challenge. So they have to make a wagon wheel, which is a bit like a, a moon pie, I think they call them in the U.S. Uh, so it's like uh, two pieces of uh, biscuit with marshmallow in between and then a chocolate. It's like a snack. Uh, used to get, used to, back in the day, like when I was growing up, they thought sugar was good for you or good for the economy. And you didn't eat lunch unless you had a dessert. Uh, like now, even my daughter, I mean, we definitely, we just uh, don't definitely don't have dessert during the day. And even most nights I say, well, you know, let's look forward to the dessert as a treat uh, in the future. But back then, so this was something you'd have like a mass marketed one. But Paul was like, I'll make, the, I make these, I have a recipe for them. Also, the one they're doing has jam in it. So, but they have the recipe with no pictures or anything. So, so some of them have had a wagon wheel, some have not. Uh, so then they proceed to have to make it and follow technically, like, can you follow the steps? Uh, can you, uh, and then how is your technique, I guess? And then how much experience you do have makes a difference. And so what happens is everybody has to make the same thing. And then the judges like Paul and Prue have left and then they come back and judge it without knowing who made what? So they judge everything, but it was a tough one because uh, some people had never had it before, and then it was like uh, you you had to like uh, make the biscuits, make them circles. I don't know if you ha- I don't know if they had a cutout. Uh, make marshmallow, make a jam, and reduce it, and then get the marshmallow. And then the hardest part was like coating everything in the chocolate and then getting it to the chocolate to set. Uh, but also seemed like a lot of people had trouble getting the chocolate on. Cause it's like, do you dip it? Do you paint the chocolate on? Do you drizzle it on? 
and again, like these biscuit challenges, it seems like one thing is like the baking time, especially if you never made it before. You say, well, I've never made this specific biscuit style, so I don't know how long it's going to go in there for. I'm just trying to see in my notes anything out. John's undercooked. Manon's extremely neat. Uh, Prue. Oh, this is, seems like it was something else, but Brew had never had one. Or no, uh, that's when they talk about, uh, uh, she says, I, never, I, I wouldn't have pot noodle till my 40s. Yeah, so wagon wheel, prep time. I was just trying to see. Uh, so Ruby came in first. I think uh, the other top uh, bakers in that particular competition were Ruby, Briny, Manon. I think Antony had trouble because he had uh, never had it before. And then a bunch of people had trouble with uh, with it because uh, they, they just said, like, the chocolate made a lot of hard things. And, uh, yeah, so, so the, like, yeah, I don't know who else had trouble other than that. But, yeah, so that's a little bit about uh, the first episode of, uh, what do we say, Collection 9? I don't even know. Talk about technical. Not only is baking technical trying to figure out which episode and where to find it is technical too. So it's collection six, episode one, but I think it's the ninth season of, uh, but it's biscuits week. Um, so yeah, really enjoyable. We also will have, uh, like those of you that are patron, $10 on our patrons will be getting an exclusive, uh, occasional episode about the facts of B- British, great British baking bake off. And yeah, so we'll be back next week. I don't know if next week will be a one part or two parters. I still get a feel for uh, how we're going to do this. Uh, but thanks for listening. And here you go. Let me tuck in. Oh, you want me to not do? Should I tuck in or move? Okay, I got it. How's that? Okay, let me move that for you. All right, and then yeah, get comfortable and listen to these. Thank you. So uh, good night. All right, I want to thank some of the people that reviewed the podcast recently on Apple Podcasts. LSK. Says effective. Not sure how it works, but 100% success rate. Uh, then Melk260 from Australia says Snorchek is a, Snortrek is a game changer. Uh, they really love it. Uh, then NYCL is, uh, they really got it. This is a longer review, but it's worth reading. It's really, well, if you're new, yeah, but uh, the phases of sleep with me. Phase one, what the heck is this? Are you kidding me? This dude has the most AA and no, not a pleasant voice ever. Seriously, super A N N O Y ing. Why in the world? What is he talking about? Honestly, and what? How old is this dude? Like 70? Phase two. Wait a second, what just happened? I was asleep for six hours. Let me try this again. Oh, wow. Works every time. Phase three. Phase three. Phase three. Scoots, I love you, man. You're weird and delightful and comforting and calming. Sometimes I wake up uh, to shift position. I hear something charming and funny. I say, oh, man, I got to listen when I'm awake. Uh, I know it doesn't make any sense to new people when they come to listen to it, but uh, it becomes the like the long intro becomes the stairway to Sleepy Town once you give up control and let the magic happen. Thanks, Scoots. Thanks, NYCLC. Uh, our SSSSS134 says the podcast helped me through labor. Been listening on and off for years, help calm my anxiety at night and fall asleep, but it really came through last week when I was in labor with my first child. I needed something to listen to to calm myself down and take my mind off my contractions during my first long labor. Right, thanks for helping give birth to a healthy baby girl. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, A-O, A-A, A-A, A-A. AIO says, uh, weird, but it works. I've listened to this podcast every night for the past 10 days and I've yet to reach the end of one. Generally impressed because I usually lie awake for hours and now I'm falling asleep. Can't explain it. Uh, Bry, uh, says love, listen to it every night. Uh, then we got one star, but it says cool it's from Hillary, Hillary rain. So I love it. Cool. I'm happy one star when it says cool. Uh, why would zero says relaxing, uh, name 47, 47, 47, 39, 29, three. One of my favorite, one of my favorite androids out there. Yo, it works. Uh, I know people get confused. You probably don't understand what you're listening to. Maybe it's the left thinking part of the brain. 
but it's uh, like uh, you got to pass the 20 minutes is uh, uninformative and silly ramblings, low monotone. Uh, it's not meant to induce complicated or, you know, stressful thoughts uh, that keep you up at night. With that said, uh, sometimes uh, they've listened and they haven't heard uh, the words. Oh, they've, they, yeah, they started tuning it out. Uh, but yeah, they, they would prefer, they may want to look into the ad free episode cause it has less, uh, timely mess, mess messages. And then, uh, Boana Ka 101 says sorcery. You literally only heard the first five minutes of all the episodes and I don't know, uh, how or why it works, but it's incredible. Favorite podcast. I don't listen to laugh and emoji. So thank you for that kind review and, uh, sleep with me goes, uh, so, uh, like, uh, like, oh, Sleep With Me exists as a free podcast because the people that uh, support the show on Apple Podcasts or, uh, or support the show on Patreon or support our, uh, what is that called? Oh, our sponsors. But, yeah, you could write a review on Apple Podcasts. It's a huge way to help. Or just let somebody know about the show. That's free. And I always appreciate it. And, you know, if you do, you don't even have to tell people about Sleep With Me. Just tell them about a podcast. Uh, and speaking of, speaking of telling you about something, I want to tell you about something right up here. Thanks. All right, everybody, it's uh, time for me to talk about that bed that I'm in every single night. Oh, boy, do, am I, you know, with the winter, I say, I'm going to be comfortable these long winter nights with my Helix. My brother just got a Helix. Him and his wife have been telling me all about it. Uh, you know, listener after listener, friend, family member, everybody loves their Helix bed because they've got a bed for everybody. So just think about the bed you're in right now. D- does it really, is it really comfortable? How, is it, a, is is it a bed you've had in your family for a while? You say, well, I don't even know where we got this bed. Because it's time for you to upgrade. You deserve it. Helix makes personalized mattresses right here in America, and they're shipped straight to your door with free no-contact delivery, free returns, and a 100-night sleep trial. To choose a mattress, Helix made a quiz that just takes two minutes to complete, matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. So if you like a mattress that's really soft or firm, or if you sleep on your side or your your back, your stomach, or you sleep really hot. With Helix, there's a specific mattress for each and everybody's unique taste. And that's for me. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. I guess partially I sleep. I don't really sleep on my back too much, but I sleep hot. And I want something that's comfortable. So I took the quiz. That's how I ended up with the Helix Dusk. And it is absolutely mind-blowing. I got the Dusk Lux. It's the best mattress I've ever owned. I love Helix, but you don't have to just take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ Wired Magazine and Apartment Therapy. Just go to helixsleep.com sleep and take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you with a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Right, Mystery Bard? Just go to helixsleep.com sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. The customized mattress will give you the best sleep of your life. Thanks, Mr. Bard. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They even pick it up if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash sleep for $200 off. Thanks, everybody.